This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition, battle-tested nutrition, expert formulated supplements. Use code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. So let's talk about, um, you know, this is a question I get a lot from, from guys like, I, I don't think they can wrap their heads around how the carb cycling with, works with fat loss. I, I, tell, I tell dudes I'm eating, you know, a thousand grams of carbs and a cheat meal on, on a high carb day. And they're like, how the fuck are you losing weight that way? <laughs> well, it cheats the system. So what, how does the, how does the body work? The body's no different. You know, you fill your car with gasoline and if you put 10 gallons of gas in, that's how many gallons you can use. That's it. That's the way it works. It, food's the same way. How many calories you eat. If you, if you burn more than those calories, you have to find those calories from somewhere else and your body pulls it from stored calories in the body. The problem is that we don't just have gasoline in the body. It's, it would be like, if we have diesel, we have gasoline and we have, you know, uh, transmission fluid. There's like three fuel sources or something. Which, yeah, I guess you check the tree. You can use transmission fluid in some old diesels a little bit, but uh, they actually will burn. But, uh, but anyways, so there's, we store, we store energy as uh, protein, which is muscle. Uh, we don't ever want to burn that. We store it as uh, carbohydrates, which is glycogen. Uh, we want to minimize that because we want to be able to use that when we want to use it around training. And then we store it as fat. And there's almost an unlimited ability to store fat, obviously, because there's thousand pound people. So those are the, those are our three pathways. Now, when we, uh, when we go into calorie deficit, we burn glycogen first, that starts getting depleted. And then we burn stored fat and both of those get depleted. And if the, if the glycogen gets depleted too much, your body will have to force something called gluconeogenesis, which is creating new glucose, you know, genesis, create glu neo new glucose, create new glucose from protein. And that's when you can actually start breaking down muscles. So we don't want the, the, the glycogen to get too low. So what do we do? So with the high carb day, what we've done is we've created an artificial state where glycogen is really low. And now on the high carb day, we eat more calories than we burn. And so we're going to store those calories. You know, that's, that's thermodynamics, that's conservation of energy. You cannot get around that. But because we've created the situation where you're deficient in glycogen and we supply most of the calories from, from carbohydrates or glucose, which is gonna be stored as glycogen, we create a case where we eat more than we burn and we do store those calories, but because of the special circumstances, we store them as glycogen rather than fat. What that does is it restores thyroid function, it restores your know, glycogen, obviously, so you can train harder and it keeps your, it, it preserves muscle mass and it keeps your metabolism higher and it, and it positively affects leptin and ghrelin to help, help your hunger hormones a little bit minorly obviously you know there's only it's like that's a deck chair on the titanic again because your hunger hormones are going to be ruined in prep anyways but that's what you do so we've created this state where we are eating more calories than we burn we've just set it up so we, we've hacked the system so that we're storing those calories as glycogen rather than fat which it proves the rest of the week. everything else is better the rest of the week we have glycogen to fuel our training so that we can push harder and cardio to burn more fat uh you know and we can take the calories lower on those other days without worrying about muscle loss yeah, that's what I keep trying to explain to guys that you, you can't violate the, the thermodynamics. You can't violate co conservation of energy. Yeah, it, I mean, that people think like they, oh, yeah, well, I don't. But it, if you think about it, you know, the, anything else we use energy, you can't turn your light bulb on without electricity. You know, you can't drive your car without gas. You can't, there's, you know, if, if you could create energy from nothing, we wouldn't have to use oil. We wouldn't have to use electricity. We would just snap our fingers and have all the energy we wanted magically. So with the carb cycling, essentially what you're doing is you're putting it in the gas tank to save for later. With yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You know, putting it in the, in the glycogen the stores. Tank, yeah. And, and I, yeah, because you have, you have, yeah, like you said, the reserves, you have your, you have muscle protein, you have, uh, glycogen stores and then fat stores yeah we, so we're we, putting in the yeah, we're not putting we, in the don't, fat we don't want them in the fat i noticed too and i don't know if it has you know you you talked about effect on t3 but i noticed uh it, it does seem to have some sort of metabolic effect too like last year i noticed throughout the week when i was on my contest prep that my fat loss my fat loss would get lower as the week would go yeah, yeah. i'd hit my high day you know like the, usually like the last two days before my high day i really didn't lose much 
And then I hit my high day, and then it was just like after the high day, it just somebody oh, relit the flame. High, yeah, you're all sweaty the next day. You're hot. You're starving the next day. And and think about it. What, you know, you have to think how the body works. The body, you know, the body doesn't have a thought process. It's just this system of things running into each other. You know, like you know, carbohydrates under the body, it breaks them down eventually into to the simple sugar glucose, which is then small enough to bump into the walls of the small intestine and pass through, and then it floats around the bloodstream. You know, until. Uh, until it finds a cell that insulin has been bound to and it shuttles into the cell. And then the, if there's sodium and water present, it goes up to the muscle. I mean, there's just things ramming into each other randomly, you know? So the body doesn't have like a system for anything. So what happens is, is that when you supply an influx of calories, the body has more room for error, basically. And it, it can be less efficient, you know? And so, it, it you know, the body's always thinking and survive. The body's always geared for survival and if there's an influx of calories it doesn't mind being less efficient it doesn't mind raising your body temperature and historically you know we didn't have close <laughs> all of human existence so raising your body temperature was really a powerful life-saving tool so if it can if it can like be less efficient with calories and, and uselessly produce atp or even even produce you know, through brown adipose tissue like uncoupling a proton through my, like metabolic uncoupling and produce heat if it can do all those things it'll do it it's a better survival tool but it can only do that when there's a surplus of calories and conversely when there's a there's not enough calories the the body can't be inefficient with anything and so the th the only things that the only process are going to bump into each other are going to be the most efficient ones you know your body's not going to waste any insulin receptor it's not going to so there's and and uh, you, you think it's like it's morbid but you know, you can go to Somalia and see people that eat less than a week than we eat in a day and they don't die, you know, and they don't even weigh that dramatically less. The body just, you know, their only processes that are happening in their body are the ones that absolutely must happen to survive that moment. There's no future survival. There's no storage process. There's no inefficient mechanisms that produce the heat or, you know, and and so that's what that's what happens. You know, if you just lower calories, yeah, that works right away. But the body is always going to get going to improve its efficiency, and that deficit is going to be that 500 calorie deficit on day one might only be 490 deficit on day five. Well, you can imagine what it is on week five or week 15 if you don't rechart reset the system with the high carb phase. I think that's where I was at at the end of the contest prep last yeah, year. Dude, I, could, I couldn't, I couldn't fucking think, man. I had to call in to work. I, I'm like, I, guys, I, I, I can't work. I was losing my keys every every time I took took my car out. It was just shit like that. My brain was not working. Um, so yeah, I, I, not not that I'm starving like a Somalian, <laughs> but I've been there before. So shifting gears, how does it work differently with uh, with the uh, you're trying to add size in a hypertrophy phase? Yeah, so it's slightly different because we're not we're not restoring that glycogen. Kind of what we're doing in that case is so typically what happens is it, it, people think it would be the opposite, but in a diet, typically, if anything, the high days are even higher. And you'll notice when we get really depleted, sometimes we'll do mega high days where the high days are like sometimes I'll say, like, I want 1200 grams of carbohydrates before your cheat meal, you know, and, so, and we would never really do that in the off season. In the off season, they're more mellow not always they're more mellow proportionally you know the, the the proportion of calories aren't that aren't as as dramatically higher than they are medium low days uh even though the high days might be the same they're they're closer to what the the calories in the medium and low day are and we'll have more of them and so on those days they're hypertrophy days and it's the same process uh so what hap what what is how do, again, you insulin, you know, Lantus, why that works so well for you? What, how does that work? We talked about it. insulin floats through, binds to a receptor, shuttles some proteins around, and it, and it increases an influx of nutrients. It increases amino acid uptake into that cell also, which increases the likelihood that protein synthesis will occur. So we want all those processes. And so we have the high days that do that. The problem is there's a couple problems. One, why don't we do, why don't we just do all the high days every day then? Well, the insulin sensitivity starts going to shit in a hurry. We can't do that. We take the insulin on the high days. You know, if we're taking Humalog three times a day, seven days a week, we're, that 10 year process is going to be accelerated into, you know, two years, basically. Right. Uh, and then also fat gain, you know, you're told we're always towing the line of, of how many calories we can eat uh, to, to maximize muscle growth without without causing too much fat gain and you're never going to get perfect because you're going to want to overshoot the number you know whatever that number is you want more calories than that to make sure you maximize muscle growth and but there's going to be some fat gain with that you want to you don't want to get as close to the line as possible because you don't want to lose out on any muscle growth but you have to overshoot it somewhat and those high days absolutely overshoot it so if you have too many of them then you're going to overshoot even further so how do we mitigate that 
Well, um, in the off season, our medium days would be the other training days that aren't high days. Those are more just standard days, standard bodybuilding days, you know, moderate protein, moderate carbohydrate, moderate fat. Most of the carbohydrates are around training, nothing special about those. So we can't, we need to, we still need those to be hypertrophy days. So what, what, what do we have left to kind of counter the, the over plus side, the over influx of the high days is the, the off days. So in the off days, we take carbohydrates, you know, quite a bit lower and maybe increase the fats a little bit. And we, so we have enough protein, get enough healthy fats and enough calories to make sure that, you know, we can recovery and repair of your training can happen. But we take the, the carbohydrates maybe a little bit lower to the point where we, we hope that maybe a little bit of glycogen depletion occurs. So we have room for the carbohydrates on high day. I noticed this past year, I mean, this was really my first full off season working with you, but I, I, I stayed leaner than I ever have. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, like my, well, your my, eleven week outpicks are a testament to that. I mean, they they don't look like the same person. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Compared to last year, you know, I, uh, significantly leaner than what I was. I, I I don't really feel like I did anything different. It just you know, it's just the process, I guess, going through the process. Uh, but it, it's definitely a different different way than I've ever dieted and and run nutrition before. I, I just pretty much would eat the same thing every day. <laughs> so I, yeah, and that's that is the problem with it is it's, it's more, uh, exhaustive or not, you know, it's, it's more involved. It is, t- you know, cause bodybuilding is already an exhausting sport. You know, you, you got to prep your meals, you, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta train all the time. And so there's a lot involved. And so sometimes there is comfort in just like a standard meal plan, you know, but you, if you're going to go to the extremes, you need to do the extremes and you're missing out on a little bit, I believe with that. And I think you've experienced the same thing. And so, you know, that's what it's easier to do the basic meals in the off season and you think, well, how much difference can it make? But, you know, like you look at a bell curve, you know, the, you know, all the magic happens at the extremes, you know, you have a bell curve of intelligence. Most of the people live here, you know, like the Einstein's and Isaac Newton's live here, the Elon Musk. Well, that's where all the magic happens, you know? And so maybe they're only, you know, they're only one standard deviation or, you know, only a few percentage above the, other, the, the, the people at the top of this line here. And you think, well, like is 2% that big of a difference. Well, when you want to do something special, yeah, it is. It does add up, you know. So what do you do with just regular people, just a, a regular Joe? I, I I, just, you know, I help a few people out, man. Dude, I can't, I could not see your your average it's hard. It's housewife hard. And, following a carb cycling. And that's the thing. I mean, it's hard. And it's luckily what I do, it kind of minimizes that concern. Not a lot of housewives are finding me, you know, online. Uh, but I did work as a nutritionist for a cardiology group, so I did have to. You just, you, you have to keep it way more basic. A lot of times we'll just do two different days. I will still want them to do a different, different diet on the days they work out with weights and then the days they don't work out with weights. So there's a lots of different things that we can do. Sometimes I just do straight calorie cycling uh, because they won't, they're not going to be compliant with tracking macros. They don't want to learn it. And they, you know, and they'll say, well, just give me a diet, just give me food plan. And that, you know, it's, you know, if you're, if you're a, a overweight housewife who doesn't exercise, there's a reason for that. And it's, you're not going to follow my food plan, you know? So I, right. I can tell you what meals to eat, but I can guarantee by day three, you're going to be sick of it and you're going to be looking for other things. So I want to teach you a way to build your own meals. So one way we do is we just straight calorie cycle. And so if they're, if they're say the metabolism is 1500 calories a day, you know, we'll drop, we'll do, uh, we'll do, uh, Either well, uh, these numbers don't quite work out because cardio is involved. But let's say there's no cardio, no workout. We're just doing the de- deficit from calories. If their BMR is 1,500 calories a day, we'll do like a base day of 1,000 calories, so they burn 500 calories there. And then we'll do like an extremely low day of like 800 calories, so they burn you know 700 calories there. And then we'll do a higher day of like 1,700 calories or 1,800 calories. That's actually kind of the same thing as a high carb day. It just won't be. It's not as efficient. But you're dealing with someone, you're not dealing with someone who's trying to be at that extreme. You're dealing with someone who's trying to improve their body composition a little bit. We'll do that, or I will do a more basic, like training days will have these, this, these like higher carbs, and then off days won't have higher carbs, but we won't do the as much variation where each meal is different. It'll be you'll have like four meals of the same, same thing on medium days, four meals of the same macros on low day. Just more. I mean, it's really just a much more simplified and basic version of the same thing. It's funny, even when I talk to the bros at the gym about carb cycling and I start going through the detail of what I'm doing, they, they start shaking their heads like, nope. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, how about you learn something? You know, that's what, like, I don't, 
I don't understand that. I just, man, I just don't. Because if if you want to do something, why don't you want to do it the best you can? Right. I don't, I just don't. Un- and because it, that's, that's the thing too, is, you know, I was thinking about this. I think I talked about this at Elite maybe, uh, but uh, like, you know, like people talk about how, how difficult a sport is, or, you know, like if someone say bodybuilding is the most difficult sport because there's, you know, you got to eat, you got to, but anything you do, any endeavor, any work, any business, any sport, and everything's equally as hard is from your perspective. Meaning if you want to be as good as you can be, you have to work as hard as you can work. That's it. You know, yeah. whether or not like where they, where you end up is not necessarily up to you. What's up to you is how hard you work. And if you want to see how far you can get with something, why would you not work as hard as you can? I don't understand that. I, I don't either, but that's 99% of people, yeah, you, yeah, you, you know, yeah. you, you know how it goes, man. Um, and so like with, a with, with, let's say if I'm a football player or a power lifter or something, uh, and a performance athlete, what, what, is there a difference between, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's, that's the big thing is, so what we do is for, for, for appearance, which is entirely different than for performance, you know? And so the, like, we'll have, like, I'll have you have your high days on a training day, you know? And so the first thing people who, who, who see that will be like, well, but I train in the morning on leg day. So I'll, I should have the high day the day before leg day. So I'm a good leg workout. Right. And so, no, that's not what we're doing. We're not trying to get a good leg workout. We're trying kind to feel maximize the results of the leg workout. Right. And that means we need the food during and after. But for performance, it's different. And, a, and an, an analogy I like to use that makes it easy, it's kind of an analogy in reverse. But let's say I was, I was running to do cardio and I was trying to lose fat. Well, if I was running for my cardio and trying to lose fat, I wouldn't want to drink Gatorade or drink gel packs or anything like that to have sugar during the run because that would be a different energy source. But if I was running a marathon for performance to set, to set a record time, I would want to drink the Gatorade, eat the gel packs. I would want those things during the performance. So it's two totally different things. What am I doing the process for? If we're doing it to look better, we're doing to build muscle. We want the high day on the day so that all the meals during and after we're facilitating our hypertrophy. If I'm doing that because I want to perform on a day, I want that glycogen in my system the day beforehand. And so the high day might be before the performance day. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So, so, so for a football player, if he has a game on Sunday, you would have them do the high day Saturday. Saturday, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, because you're going to train on the glycogen you have on the day before. You know? Okay. Yeah, and we're not we're not trying to we're we're looking to have a hell of a football game. We're not looking to build mu- see how much muscle we can build from what we did on the football right. field. Yeah. Right. So you want to be fueled up and ready to go for the football game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a. That's like, that's probably the best thing you can do for football. And like, I mean, I played at a real, you know, real small college, but back, and it was 20 years ago, but there was nothing, no thought process like that. And, uh, you know, if I could, if there's any strength and conditioning coaches or anything out there, if you got college kids playing on Saturday, force them to have extra meals at the, at the, at the, at the meal hall or whatever, high carbohydrate meals on Friday, it will dramatically improve their performance over time. On I, I played basketball, man, and I, I lived off of Taco Bell. Yeah, yeah it's like <laughs> looking back, it's like wish I could go back and redo things. It's like, man, how much better could I have been? If I... <laughs> yeah, it was the same way. With me. It was Taco Bell, and then and then uh, I had a friend of mine. Occasionally, it would have some Anadrol. <laughs> I didn't even know what it was, man. He's like, here, <laughs> take one of do that. We used to load up on the rip fuel. That was just because. Oh time, man, I love that fuel. shit. Oh man, we just, I'm I'm amazed. I was had a heart attack. They're just like eat handfuls of before a game like idiots not knowing anything that and what was it hydroxy 160 <laughs> hydroxy cut I oh, think yeah, was, oh yeah and then they used to, used to be able to get these yellow jackets at the gas station that yeah, were straight then, ephedrine well, the mini fins the mini t's that yeah uh, 25 ephedrine 50 caffeine yeah. it was basically methamphetamines <laughs> yeah we call it trucker meth yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i used to do that See, that was my pre-workout guys guys talk about there was no pre-workout shakes back then and i'm like yeah there was yeah. that's what that was my pre-workout shake <laughs> We didn't need a shake. <laughs> you were shaking from the ephedrine. I, I remember finding that stuff. Yeah, there were. I, I got. I can't remember. The, that's when the shit got banned. Was uh, there was a dude? Uh, I think we played for the Dolphins. That his heart exploded yeah, in training God, camp. Yeah, yeah. Something I wanted to ask you about. And this, this is one that always bothers me. And and I, I get these dudes that reach out to me all the time, Justin, that talk about gear. And it, it it always seems to be like the smallest dudes that are taking the most shit. Man, it, it, it is. Yeah. Well, there's, there's just always so much it can do. You know, it, it's not magic. What, you know, you can take, you know, you can take 100 Anadrol a day. 
the anadrol doesn't do anything. The anadrol is increasing protein synthesis. Protein synthesis. Yeah. So it it what so like I try to think of a ways to make analogies that, that kind of make it to simplify it because there's like chemicals and stuff. There's a lot going on. You can think about it. Say your your body's a house. You're trying to build a house, right? So now the uh, you, like your training would be like the general contractor, or the foreman. He's telling everyone where to go. You know, he's we're training chest, which means we're telling everyone to work on this part of the house today. You know, and then. And then the, like the, the gear, the anabolics would be like the number of workers you have, you know? So the more you're taking more gear, you're going to have more workers and they can get more done provided that there's more materials, you know, and the lumber and the nails and the things like that is the food. And so if you don't supply the food, it doesn't matter how many workers you have. And it doesn't matter how good your foreman is at delegating them. They need the materials and they all work together. You know, so you need the training, you need the foreman telling you, we're working on this part of the house, this is the layout, this is the structure, you know, and it needs to be organized so there's no waste. And that's your training, you know, and then you take the anabolics, that's your workers. We got a lot of workers working on it. And now we need to supply the materials, the lumber, that's your food. And if we supply enough of that, that we put all the workers to good use, it's going to dramatically increase progress on the home build. But if you don't supply the materials, and those workers are just standing around doing nothing. And that's what the gear does. We don't have the diet in mind. They're just the gears just floating around your system doing nothing, ready to build muscle, but it doesn't have the lumber. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested nutrition. Expert formulated supplements. Use code AB10 at checkout for 10% off.